Hello everyone, welcome back to the studio here at Rathbone Manor. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at this interesting adjustable spanner here by Karu. Uh, it's German in manufacture. But before we take a detailed look at it, I think we ought to travel back in time a few weeks and take a look at it, what it looks like um, as I got it from the car boot sale. It uh, cost me one pound and as you can see it was rather uh, rusty and filthy. The action didn't work at all very well and what I did in the end was um, to put it into the uh, ultrasonic cleaning tank at work after which I gave it a, a short uh, amount of time on my wire wheel and this is the finished result. There we go, look at that. It looks a lot better doesn't it? And it actually works as it should do now. Um, it is like a lot of tools of its age because I think this is sometime before uh, maybe 1945 uh, in the early uh, 1900s as you can see it is of um, folded steel and um, forged um, parts as well the uh, jaw here is forged I would imagine the little insert just here is forged as well this is forged um, the main handle and the lever action are uh, sheet metal folded as they did a lot of that at the time and the little toggle action in here is uh, most likely I would think also a stamping and we have a spring in here too, I've managed to clean the spring up too, cleaned it all up put some um, 3 in 1 oil into it and I've got it working a treat now ok so this is obviously some form of uh, adjustable spanner as you can see and we have some markings on here which I believe is like uh, 5 to 16, now whether that's five millimeters out to 16 millimeters not really sure um, it kind of fits in there uh, what have we got here there's a 16 millimeter spanner here you can see it's more or less roughly the same size especially if you close it up a little bit it's more or less the same size as you can see so possibly that's what it means we also have some markings here we've got the uh, manufacturer Karu uh, which I believe is a German company Underneath that we have, as I said, the 5 and 16, possibly mil, who knows. And over this side we have um, DRP, not sure what that is either. Um, we have two DRGM. Um, on my original um, YouTube car boot sale report, um, somebody left a comment say this was an early German kind of um, patent mark used between, I think he said to me, 1877 and 1944. So if that is true, I mean, I can't find anything about it online. That just shows how old these little fellows are. I mean, there was a lot of this, as I say, there was a lot of this stamped uh, steel and forging going on at the time. And it works quite well. It's, it's really smooth now. And so we've got spring in there. We've got the toggle action. Uh, the toggle action is obviously uh, when it's closed up a little bit makes it harder for, to, for this to open in theory. Um, it feels quite nice in the hands, I like the material, it's slightly, um, maybe slightly pitted there a little bit. I don't think it was overly rusty but I think this might be the finish that it came from the factory and it's quite a nice finish I think. It feels nice in the hand, rather nice uh, feel to it. I think the original owner it looks like he may have been hammering it a little bit. There's some dents in the top there as you can see. Um, interestingly, I, I'm not sure what these were originally used for. It could have been designed of some kind of adjustable spanner, possibly. Who knows, I don't really know. Or it could have been another type of um, battery terminal spanner like this. These are battery terminal pliers actually. As you can see the design of the, uh, the head here. Obviously to get hold of um, battery terminals and work on them quickly back in the day. This is um, it's a similar thing, it's quick to use so who knows what it was uh, originally designed for. Anyhow, whatever it was designed to do I think we ought to take it down to my workshop and give it um, a bit of a workout uh, to see exactly what it can do so uh, come on let's go. Okay then, so here we are in the workshop with the uh, Carew lever action adjustable spanner. Uh, what we'll do is we'll get a few nuts and bolts and give it a go. Okay then, so as you can see I've collected together a few nuts and bolts that will actually fit in the jaws 
So um, I think we ought to, uh, you know, get started and give it a go. And I'm thinking we're going to start with this little teeny tiny thing here, which I believe um, M4, I think. All right, so here we go. The little small, I believe it's an M4. You can see it's running around quite nicely there. Let's get the uh, caro uh, clamped onto it. There we go. It's quick and easy to do. This is what I actually thinks it was designed for battery terminals because it's rather quick to use. Let's see how much torque we can um, get going on it. Well, I'll tell you for one thing straight away, it's not that comfortable to use because it's, um, look, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's actually digging into the back of my hand, the palm of my hand, sorry. It's digging into the palm of my hand as I'm using it, leaving that little square mark there. It's quite uncomfortable to use. And that's even with this little small, I think it's, as I say, it's an M4, I think, M5, M4, I think. It's quite uncomfortable digging into the back of my hand there. But we've got it um, tightened fairly well, although having said that, I don't know if you can see, but the jaws are actually springing open a little bit. It's not as good as it could be, I don't think. So it's not a very good grip, it would soon round off the nut, I do believe. So yeah, okay, let's move up a size and let's give this M5 a go. Shall we? Get it down onto the washer, there we go. Clamp the uh, little caro onto it. Move the handle of the vice out of the way. Right in. Get a bit better grip on this one, but it's still um, it's still trying to open. But that's the idea of the, the toggle in here, is to stop it opening. And I'm getting a much, actually getting a much better grip on this larger nut here. I've done it up quite tightly, actually. Let's get it undone, or at least try to. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. Okay, let's move up to this M8 here. Finger tight. Here they are again. Let's try it again. See what it's like now. A little bit of a. It's, it's the uh, jaws are quite wide open. As are the handles here. Look, the lever action is quite wide open too. Let's give it a go. See how well we can tighten it, shall we? Hup. Yeah, and that's definitely, definitely pressing into the palm of my hand, quite um, painfully there. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, springing the jaws. I can't keep the jaws closed all that well. Here we go, look. So as I tighten it, it's, it is actually opening the jaws of this spanner up a little bit. Hopefully you can see that a lot better on this top-down view. As I tighten it up, the slip it, look, see it slipping off? And I, as, despite the fact I'm gripping this, the uh, lever really hard, it's still slipping off. And I don't think it's all that tight either. Ugh. Okay, so I've got this M10 in here now, which I think is um, too big enough for it. I mean, it does say it's 16mm in theory. Um, will it go on? Yes, it will go on. Um, what the jaws like? Let's have a look at the, uh, the handles. Have a look at the handles here. Well, the handles are at their maximum opening, so I'm not going to get much of a grip on here at all. As you can see, it's fairly loose at the moment. Let's give it a go. See how well we can tighten it up. Now then, are those jaws trying to open again? Uh, well, actually, I've got a fairly decent amount of um, torque on there now. Wow, that's good. It looks like the uh, larger size of the... Um, hang on, am I going to get it on there again? Why can we not get it back on there? We had it on there a minute ago. What's going on here? Right. Okay, so I have to say, I'm not all that impressed with how uh, uncomfortable this thing is to use. It's made my uh, palm quite sore there really, a little square bit pushing in there, it's not, you know, you just can't get a decent grip of it, um, even on the, the smaller nuts and bolts here, I'm not impressed with that at all, but um, they do kind of work, as I say, I think they're probably for the uh, vintage battery terminals really, where you know, you've got to do it quickly, like this thing here, but I think if you wanted an adjustable spanner, this would probably be your best to go to, to be honest with you, because um, this not very comfortable at all really let's get it back to the studio all right then well yes not that impressed with them at all really look at that left a red mark on the palm of my hand these have this little corner just here so yeah uh, not really that impressed with them at all comfort wise um, they're well made as you can see that as I say we have uh, you know multiple part construction here riveted together um, I think they're all right in theory, but uh, I don't think they're meant for like a proper to replace a proper adjustable spanner because you're simply not going to get the torque on them. 
despite this toggle link here. They, they don't um, want to grip very well at all. You'd be better off with a proper spanner, something like this here. That would give you a much better torque on the uh, fit fixings. But this thing here, uh, maybe for uh, battery terminals it might be quite quick to get a battery terminal on and off with, but um, I wouldn't want to use it for a long period of time. I just add about four nuts and bolts down there, different sizes. Quite uncomfortable to use, to be honest with you. In that corner there, don't like them at all really, uh, that way. But uh, other than that, as a vintage tool, definitely going into my collection down there with my um, other battery terminal pliers. That's what I think these probably are or were. Can't be sure on that because I can't find anything about them online. But um, if you know any better, please let me know in the comments down below. So what an interesting, if uncomfortable, tool to use then. I've got them working a lot better than they were when I first got them, because I say they were quite rusted up. Um, the little link in here, just down there, where it makes contact with the inside of the handle here. Uh, this bit here was quite burred over, and it wouldn't work very well at all, so I had to file it down, polish it up a little bit. So we've got a little bit of uh, three-in-one oil in there, and it runs a lot better now. The whole tool does, and you can actually use it now, which is good. But as I say, it's not, I don't find it all that comfortable to use, actually, to be honest with you guys. Alrighty then, um, let me know what you think of the tool down in the comments uh, below. Um, I say it's an interesting find at the car boot sale the other week. As I say, I, don't, I wouldn't want to use it for uh, too long a period. Not for trying to tighten nuts and bolts up properly, you'd be much better off with a, a proper adjustable spanner or, or a ring spanner or an open ended whatever uh, rather than this because it'd be much more comfortable to use. But uh, yeah, uh, it's an interesting tool for my collection. Uh, whether they did them in other sizes, I don't know. Whether this is the only size they did or whether they did larger ones. If they did larger ones, perhaps they might be a little bit more comfortable to use. Alrighty guys, well uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, uh, click a like if you, enjoyed, uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, and you can share the video with your friends. Uh, you can keep an eye out for this on my Instagram channel, because I'm pretty sure I've got it down there a few weeks ago, so it'll be on my Instagram channel. And um, I will see you um, in a future video then guys, so um, thanks for watching. <coughs>